What's up guys, Chris here and welcome to another very exciting video. Today, Peppo and I are going to share with you the best longsword combos in Sunbreak. We won't cover all of the new longsword moves, instead we will just focus on the three most important longsword combos you need to deal optimal damage. The old and best way in Rise of leveling up the spirit gauge by chaining three Yai spirit slashes in a row is not that great anymore in Sunbreak. These days are gone. The Yai spirit slash was heavily nerfed. Its raw motion value was lowered from 55 to 35 on the first hit and 35 to 17 on the delayed ticks, overall reducing the damage of this combo by nearly half. So the first best longsword combo in Sunbreak is using the Silkbind Sakura Slash to level up the Spirit Gauge faster and dealing more damage at the same time. In Sunbreak this is now an extremely convenient way to get your Spirit Gauge from zero to red. In order to use Sakura Slash, you need to press these two buttons. For all of our combo videos, we will show on the screen which buttons to press instead of using button labels, since all of you guys play on different controllers. We want to make sure everyone watching can understand how to use these combos the most easy way possible. Sakura Slash is especially good for its elemental motion value and therefore extremely beneficial to use with elemental longswords. This combo will help you a lot at the very start of the hunt, but you need to have three wire bugs, so make sure to collect the third wire bug before approaching your target monster. Sakura Slash consumes one wire bug with a cooldown of about 36 seconds, which is quite long. If you play with Wire Bug Whisperer at level 3, you can reduce this cooldown to about 30 seconds, so we highly recommend you using the skill with Longsword. This combo is perfect for all monsters that don't roar at the beginning when they spot the hunter. But if you're fighting a large monster that roars at the beginning of the hunt, then you should start with the Yai Spirit Slash instead. Perform a switch skill swap by pressing these buttons and follow up with two Sakura Slashes. The switch skill swap is recommended as you can change your special sheath combo with the sacred sheath combo. And so you're able to chain consecutive Sakura Slashes faster. On top of that, Sakura Slash and the new sacred sheath go along really well well which brings us to the next combo. The second combo is a great damage dealer when you have an appropriate opening to use it. The Sakura Slash Helmbreaker combo. In order to perform this combo you will need to switch skill swap after Sakura Slash and simply follow up with a Helmbreaker. Notice that you can cancel the last part of the animation of the Sakura Slash with the switch skill swap. It seems like the devs actually intended for us to do that. Also note that you will need to have at least a yellow spirit gauge level and two wire bugs at your disposal to execute this combo. If that's given, it is the fastest way to deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time with a longsword. Helmbreaker and Sunbreak got nerfed as well. Its wire bug cooldown increased and its motion value decreased. The cooldown was only 20 seconds in rise, now it takes 32 seconds. The motion value got reduced from 35 to 28 in red gauge so it's now 25% less damage in Sunbreak. Even though this move doesn't deal the high damage it used to in Rise and the wire bug cooldown is slower, it is still a really good option to deal high damage when you just have a short opening as this combo can be performed really quickly during combat. Not to mention that Helmbreaker doesn't consume sharpness and its damage increases Vivan riding damage as well. Depending on both the amount of time and the wire bugs you have available, you can choose between this combo or combo number 3. This combo can only be used optimally when you have a longer opening to attack the monster, but it deals an insane amount of damage. Instead of using the switch skill swap and follow up into Helmbreaker, you can now perform a sacred sheath after it. Differently from the special sheath, this button has to be held down for the entire duration of the animation. If you release the button during the sheathing animation, you will perform the sacred sheath counter, while if you keep the button pressed, you will start the charging stance after which you will be able to land three powerful consecutive slashes called Spirit Release Slash. Depending on the charge level, you can either perform one, two or three slashes. The first slash deals little damage, the second hits a good amount and the third deals massive damage. This is the longsword attack with the highest DPS in any Monster Hunter game with a combined motion value of 463. To make a quick comparison, the Helmbreaker motion value in Sunbreak is 196, literally less than half of the Spirit Release Slash. It's important to highlight that a fully charged Spirit Release Slash will deplete all your Spirit Gauge levels from red 
to zero. However, after executing this attack, you can follow up with a Spirit Round Slash or a Spirit Reckoning, depending on the switch skill you're using, and recover one level of Spirit Gauge. We recommend using Spirit Round Slash in a combination with Sacred Chief. It deals a bit less damage than Spirit Reckoning, but it's way faster and easier to land. It's important to note that during the sheathing animation, your character can't move. But as soon as you start the charging stance, you can step in four directions to avoid attacks or just reposition yourself. But watch out, if you get hit, you will lose all of the Spirit Gauge levels and your effort will be for nothing. High risk, high reward. In Sunbreak, Longsword also received two other new moves, the Tempered Spirit Blade and the Harvest Moon. The Tempered Spirit Blade is too situational and shares the same spot with either the Helmbreaker or the Silkbind Sakura Slash, so it's kind of difficult to make room for it. Harvest Moon substitutes the Serene Pose and while it's a cool feature, it unfortunately is extremely difficult to use as you're forced to hunt the monster inside a circle made of Iron Silk. You are forced to remain inside of it when your weapon is out. But as soon as you sheath your weapon, the circle will disappear. It is really challenging, if not downright suboptimal for most regular hunting scenarios to keep fighting inside this relatively tiny circle. On top of that, Harvest Moon consumes two wire bucks, so renewing the circle comes at a high cost. Because of this reason, we decided Harvest Moon will not be worthy to be part of the top 3 best combos for this video and instead feature the 3 most solid and useful combos for Longsword. We hope you enjoyed this short video about the best Longsword combos. As always, there are many ways to play Sunbreak, so feel free to experiment with the different Longsword combos as well, as long as you have fun. That's what matters most. Stay tuned for the endgame Master Rank Longsword build video on the channel, where we'll cover the best armor and longsword to use at the end of Master Rank, including elemental longsword builds. Be sure to subscribe to not miss that, and with that said, we will catch you in the next one. Peace.